um, you know, they've really done some great things with that program. Uh, but, you know, my job is to win for my guys and, and really drive as hard as I can to, to get them those wins because they're so hard to come by now that you have to just do everything you can. Um, and, and I knew that he was driving his heart out as well as I was driving mine. You know, once I got to the lead, I felt like I got a little bit complacent, um, you know, mainly on corner entry, just being careful. Um, but, you know, what got me the lead was driving hard. And, and so I needed to get back to that. And that's kind of where we were able to stretch it out. But, you know, it's, it was a good day for Toyota because, you know, they're, they're, you know Michael Waltrip Racing, Joe Gibbs Racing has got uh, a bond that's, that's, that's working better and better together, uh, obviously with the common engine package and everything. So, you know, we're starting to see these Toyotas start to, to make a run. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really about the crew chiefs, and and you know, for us that we, I felt like we had a leg up on those guys for the past couple of years, and I drove their cars, they drove our cars uh, at Charlotte last year, and I feel like that we've probably learned a lot about each other's programs through doing that, and so um, you obviously seen, you know, how well their cars are running this year. It's just we know personally on our side how much hard work that takes to make that big of a jump. So. Uh, it's pretty commendable that they have. We'll take our next question from Bob, then go up to the press box for questions and come back down. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News for Denny and Darian. I, I'd say about since a week after you went Phoenix, the question every week was, is Joe Gibbs racing down a little bit? Are you a little bit behind? I mean, did you feel that way? And does today make you feel any different about where your program's at? Um, it's hard to analyze your program by a one-week performance. You know, you look at it in the grand scheme of things. You know, last week on a mile and a half, we went <laughs> almost a lap down, um, but we were, you know, we hung around tenth place for most of the day. But you know, you can. I I, I find it hard. I'm not going to analyze and say that all everything's good. We just need to make ten race cars just like this one, and we'll be fine. Uh, there's always things, that, areas that you need to work in. We've feel like we've identified those areas and we've gone to work on them and uh, so it's right now I feel like we're bringing better race cars to the racetrack than, than what we have and it's still going to take time there's still things that that you know, myself and Darian need to work on and um, with communication and things like that but he's he's still working within Joe Gibbs race and trying to get cars that he feels like can be better to the racetrack and all that stuff takes time you just can't do it uh, it's a big process now you have a follow-up there yeah, I'd say uh, pretty much second that we've been working really hard. Uh, the guys have done a really good job, but my confidence in Denny's feedback is getting better and better too. I know when to take what he says with what inflection in his voice, what it means. So in practice, when the sun was out, the conditions were very similar to today, he said the car feels pretty racy right here. Don't, don't really change anything. So we made very small changes. And the last run actually got us back to those conditions that we had in practice. So it's good that the speed actually matched up and the, the read on the car was really good. But we had to fight all day to be there. We had to have track position at the end to be able to have a shot at it. He did a really good job maintaining track position and keeping his head in the game, not burning tires up too early in the runs. And the car I was really worried about was a 48 coming up to there. The 56 was definitely the dominant car. But the 48 showed bursts of speed and kept catching up. So we were really trying to play the game to make sure we played the strategy right because it was going to be between us three cars the way we were looking at it. And I feel like we've made our cars better. We've made the engine program better. The communication's getting better. All of those things add up to a good possibility of a performance. But then the guys on the team, the entire FedEx Toyota team, did a great job. The pit crew did a really good job, especially when it counted there at the end and got us the positions we needed. OK, we'll go to the press box for questions. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Denny, you seemed really patient today because you knew you had the piece that could, could get the job done. But overall, and you are really good friends with Michael, um, overall, are you surprised the gains that, that Michael Waltrip Racing has made in such a short period of time? Not, I mean, surprised, no. Uh, they've hired some good people over there. Um, they've got good drivers over there. And you know, really, it's, you know, I think it's, you know, I feel like as well as they're running, we can feed off of them. And when we run well, they can feed off of us. I think it, you know, there's only really six you know, big Toyota cars out here that, uh, and we've all got to work together to, to, to all run well. And that's our main goal is to run well for Toyota and make them a championship contender. 
uh, and a championship uh, manufacturer. So I'm not surprised, um, but uh, it's it's good to see that uh, you know you've got some. We can now use some feedback from from those guys. It's it's tough using feedback from from teams that run 20th or so because you got to kind of take it for what it is. But when you have you know five or six Toyotas all running up towards the front, then you really can start to to tune in your program uh, better and better. Uh, Monty Dutton, Gaston is it? Then I just want to clarify something uh, in regard to the sun coming out. Truex himself said that it was a really bad, that it was a bad set of tires. That he did not think that the sun was the difference. But the point you made about the sun was valid, I suppose, on the basis of your car improving its performance when the sun came out. But I just wanted to ask you about that and make sure that we understood what you meant. Yeah, I mean, when I felt like our car was, you know, good and, and maybe one of the best cars in practice is when the sun was out. It was probably 70 degrees, the sun was out, and, and the track was slick, and we were running the bottom. You know, really, this is the first race in my career I've ever run the top from green flag to checkered flag. Um, and so, you know, I, I typically stay on the bottom if I can. Uh, that's where we practiced, and, you know, I just felt like our, our car was comfortable up top today when we ran that line. Um, but, you know, for us, it's, it seemed like when the sun came out, it put our car back to where, to the field, relative to the field, time-wise, you know, right back where it was in practice. Nate Ryan, USA Day. Uh, Denny, it's the first time you're going to be going to Richmond as the, the reigning winner of a sprint cup, ra sprint cup race as the conquering hero going back to your hometown. I just wanted to see how you, how you felt about that and will there be a lot of uh, late nights in Chesterfield up until Friday perhaps this this week no oh, you're from there you go are you gonna come <laughs> uh, negative uh, <laughs> well you can't hang uh, where are we gonna go <laughs> well, depends talked into it uh, I don't know um, you know we've got a lot of stuff leading up uh, we have our big uh, short track showdown coming up on Thursday so we you know, we've got a lot of planning. Uh, I've obviously need to go to, to Richmond early uh, to get some stuff done and, and, you know, schmooze some of our sponsors for that race uh, for a few days. And so uh, we're excited. You know, I, I love going to Richmond anyway, but anytime you can go after winning the previous week, it makes it a little bit more exciting. So uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, you know, we're, it's a big weekend for us next weekend, and obviously this is a, a great step uh, to trying to get some promotion for that. Any other questions from the press box? Okay, well, we'll take, come back downstairs. We'll go to Stan, then we'll go to Jim, David, Bob, and Scott. Uh, Stan Creekmore with rpmtonight.com. This is for Darian Grubb. Darian, after looking at the weather this morning, how important did that make all the information that you all had accumulated on Friday because the weather this morning was a lot closer to what Friday's practices had been like and I was just wondering how important was that? It was pretty important because the forecast itself changed 10 degrees just in the matter of 24 hours so we were trying to pretty much guess at what was going to happen. We were actually expecting it to be a little more sunny today than what it actually was so the, the adjustments got toned down from what I was planning to do yesterday based on the qualifying and what we had planned to do leaving Friday. And then uh, as we went through and saw the weather was kind of adjusting back to what we were good for in practice, I made smaller adjustments and we made much smaller adjustments in the race than what we typically would because we didn't want to get too far away from our baseline. And uh, luckily the car was good and had good speed, so we were just staying there. Danny got a couple of good restarts and kept that track position even when we fell back a little bit with some of the strategy we did. And uh, that all paid off in the end. Well, I think that when you have a, a big shift in weather from where you practice to where you race, these teams are so smart nowadays that they, they they have so many notes about what has happened in these similar situations before. Um, a lot of times it, it comes when 
uh, during nighttime races. We'll practice during the day, and then you kind of guess on what you got for, like, last week at Texas. You, you race at night, but you practice all during the day. So, you know, these teams are smart. These crew chiefs are smart. And uh, we, we talked about that we just didn't want to change a whole lot on our car because we felt like it was a car that could contend for a win um, after Friday. So I, I, I knew that we had a car. Uh, it was just a matter of are those – does everything come together? Does the pit crew nail that last stop? Does Do you have the track position at the end? And if you do, then, then you put yourself in a good place to, to win. And, and that's what we did today. All right, we'll take our next question from Jim. Then come up to David. Yeah, Jim Pedley with uh, RacingToday.com. Denny, it looked like another one of those days where being out front in clean air was going to be all important. As you were moving in on Martin, did any concerns that you wouldn't be able to get past him once you got up to him just because you had the clean air? Yeah, it, it is, especially since we were running pretty much the same line uh, all day. Uh, we, we were both running right around the wall, and I knew that the, the only advantage that I had is when his car you know, got so loose that last run, I was able to make up a lot of time on entry and a lot of time on exit because he was really fighting his car. And so really, as the driver behind, you can manipulate his car and make it worse for him uh, by getting up close to him. And that's what I kind of did uh, a few laps leading up to when we passed him is that um, I, I tried to run as close up to him on entry as I could and as close on exit. And so it takes away, away rear grip into a car that's as loose as what his was, you know, they have no choice but really to, to back off and, and um, you know, not wreck their car. So we made that run, but what is negative about it is then now you're the lead car and, and typically the second place car is a little tighter, so you fixed his adjustments by taking over the lead. So it's, um, you know, they got their car better, uh, it looked like, as, as the run went on, and luckily we just barely had enough to beat them. Go ahead with your question, David. Yeah, David Newton, ESPN.com again for Darian. Last year, a lot of people said you were working for a six-car team with uh, Hendrick and Stuart Haas. Uh, are you guys working with Michael Walter Racing like that? Is it more like a six-car team, that type of shared relationship between the crew chiefs and all? Uh, it's, it's a little bit similar, but uh, not completely because we're not running the same chassis and the same – we're running the same engine package, but that's really the only thing. And then the rest of it's just the crew chief relationship. Uh, Chad Johnston, Brian Patty, and uh, Rodney Childers are all good friends of mine. So having that one-on-one -on -one friendship is probably better than anything because we actually communicate. We we agree not to lie to each other. That's that's probably the bigger thing. <laughs> the, being honest, and I might not tell you everything, but I'll be honest with if you ask a question. And that's what we try to treat each other with respect. And we know what's going to help each other, but we still try to keep a few things under our hat to help each other uh, win. Okay, we'll take our next question from Bob, then come up front to Scott. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Um, Danny, do you have your swagger back? I mean, do you feel like if you have the best car now, you're going to win as opposed to maybe the do way I you felt a year ago? Swagger oh. back? You don't even know what that word means. Do you have the feeling that, you know, that, that if given the equipment that you're, I want to say unbeatable, but that you that it that it's everybody else's job to beat you, maybe kind of the way you felt two years ago, compared to last year. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's you're always more confident when you know that you've got cars that are capable of winning. When you know you got cars that's capable of running tenth, you're you you're not as excited. You're not as upbeat and things like that but you got to just take the weekend for what it is and I, I personally am comfortable with myself as a driver I know what my ability, abilities are I know when I have a car that's capable of winning if you put any other driver in it then it's my job then to get the get the job done and so um, I feel like I can race with anyone in the sport and and it's you know it's it's just so much about the, you know how good your communication with your your crew chief is how good your cars are and how good your pit crew is it's such a it's more of a team sport now than what it's ever been it's not just about the driver um, you know nobody it's been a long time you know crew chief crew chiefs have won races when they don't have the best car but it's been a long time since uh, uh, the best driver took a 15th place car and won with it uh, based off of what he did inside the car it's it's just so hard nowadays the cars are running so fast that um, it's, it's a lot of what happens in the shop that dictates how your weekend goes. Darian Scott, Trailer Sports Radio, 810 WHB, Racing Boys Radio. 
the way last year ended, are you driven more this year? Are these wins more satisfying to you? And did you take any thing that you learned over there at Stuart Haas because of the Hendrick involvement with that team and apply it towards your team now? Just talk about that and how much more satisfying maybe it might be this year knowing how last year ended. It's always satisfying to win regardless. And uh, it doesn't carry any more special uh, sentiment to win. It's just, it's just special regardless because you don't, you don't get to get in, in here and sit in this room very often. So you got to cherish every moment. The uh, technology is drastically different between the organizations, so the actual lessons you learn and things, it's probably more the, the style of working, being able to manage people and get the best out of the people that are there. Now that I'm at Joe Gibbs Racing, I'm starting to learn those personalities and what I can get out of them. That's probably what I take from the previous organizations till now. Uh, there's no special uh, feeling because we're beating those guys. There's special feelings. We beat 42 of them out there. So. We, uh, we just take pride in that, and we fight every week, and we show up trying to win, and we hope to and plan to. And if we don't, we're disappointed. We go back and work harder the next week.